There are two models of the VLC. The VLC, and the VLC Plus. Both are optimized for operating large arrays of fixtures, and are programmed through Faros Designer. Their programming operates in a different way than the other controllers. We can clearly see this when adding them to an existing project. Let me add a VLC 50. And rename it. I will also add a VLC plus 500, which I also rename. Of course I could also use one as a single controller in a project. The VLC and VLC Plus hardwares are configured just like the LPCX, as shown in the previous hardware video. Let me connect a VLC to my installation, and associate it to the VLC in my project file. Though I won't be connecting a VLC Plus yet, it will not affect my programming. For every VLC controller added to a project, a layout specifically for this controller is created, and named after the controller. This layout acts differently from other controller layouts, in both appearance, and function. It is geared to control a single array of pixels. This means fixtures don't have shape, or instances, and only non-automated LED fixtures are supported. The default resolution of this layout is HD, though it can go up to 16384 pixels width or height. Let me make it smaller for this example. And add some fixtures to this layout. I will use the duplication feature. And this time I follow through to the end. To have it patch fixtures directly. This auto patching feature is great, but it does require you to have your fixtures and addressing set up in a systematic way. Fixtures on a VLC layout are only associated with that specific VLC. You cannot see other fixtures in the project. Groups are not supported on the VLC controllers. Once the fixtures are added, it is this layout that acts as the map for these fixtures, and this VLC. Let's go to the mapping tab. When working with the VLC, we are not creating matrices, but instead adjust the composition. A composition is a container for holding content targets. The frame in which presets and content is played back. If we adjust this content target to snap to fixtures, presets or media played on this content target will match this frame. We can make additional compositions. Name them. And adjust the content target as required, to dimensions holding up to 16,000 pixels height or width. It is also possible to have multiple instances of the same content target in a composition. Effectively cloning the content displayed when using this content target. If you didn't use our patching feature as part of the fixture duplication wizard. You can patch your fixtures to a VLC, just as you can with the other Faros controllers. Let's move to the timeline tab, and add some programming to our VLC. I'll adjust the filtering. The VLC supports videos and effects, as well as a live video input. This makes a VLC map the DVI input to a composition target, in real time. I'm going to use the 2D Way preset in blue. Here's a second one in red, directly after the first, with a 2 seconds fade. I'll play back the red wave preset on the two instances composition. As you can see, my other fixtures are available on my timeline for fully synchronous programming. The VLC can exist in a project along with other controllers in your installation. If we simulate this timeline, we can see the blue 2D wave plays on the content target, fitting around all fixtures, and the red 2D wave plays on the composition that has two instances of the composition target. If this was a media file or a live input instead of a preset, we would see the exact same behavior. When working with the VLC there is a new action, called Set Content Target Blur. This can be used to help soften and enhance the visual appearance of the output. When uploading a project to a controller with lots of media, it will take time on the first upload to move all the media onto the controller. Every successive upload will be very quick, as the content the controller requires is already there. If you are using live video, you can capture frames of the live video input on the web interface of the VLC, to verify the live input is as expected. The VLC Plus operates in the same way as a VLC, but with more features.
Let me quickly create a fixture setup for the VLC Plus. On the Composition tab, I select my VLC Plus controller. When using a VLC Plus, you can add multiple content targets per composition. The primary and secondary layers are capable of playing back full HD. Overlay layers are added in the same way, and are intended for lower resolution videos. You can freely place the content targets next to each other, or overlapping, and use multiple instances. I can also add masks. A mask is always present. And can be used to, for example, lower the intensity in a certain area. Regardless of the content playing. This can be useful to mask out an entrance area of a large facade. On the Timelines tab, I can program the VLC Plus in similar way as I did the VLC. But with multiple pieces of media on the different content targets at the same time. In Simulate, I can see the two videos playing in the different content targets. The mask is lowering intensity on one element. The VLC Plus has additional actions that allow you to rotate and move content targets within a composition. Let's play the timeline we just edited on Startup. And add a new soft trigger. With a move content target action. I'll need to enable trigger controller edit here, to ensure proper simulation. If I now start the project and click the soft trigger, we see the content target moving. In the same way I can add a rotation action to rotate content once or indefinitely. Using variables, these actions can be linked to any external system, allowing for amazing reactive installations. This video has covered the very basics for working with the VLC and VLC+. There is one more getting started video in our series, on DALI.